South Africa, the powerhouse of the African continent, and right now, the world's biggest building site. In the lead up to World Cup 2010, the entire country is being catapulted into mega structure mayhem. Designers, architects and engineers are working together to build some of the most spectacular stadiums in the world. Deadly weather, tempers and triumphs are part of this game. Their mission, engineer South Africa. The deadline, 2010. This is the build up to the cup. The countdown is on. Three major South African cities, three unique stadiums, and just 36 months to go before millions of tourists arrive for the kickoff of one of the world's biggest sporting events. Each location has unique challenges that will push the design and construction teams to their limits. There's no missing this deadline. The world is watching and waiting. Cape Town is one of the world's most beautiful cities and right now this city is under major pressure. There is no venue large enough to host any international football games. The brief? Build a brand new super stadium to seat 68,000 spectators. The geography of Cape Town, dominated by the legendary Table Mountain, poses some extreme geological obstacles. Solid bedrock beneath the construction site in Greenpoint and a reputation for violent winds hurled onto the shoreline by the icy Atlantic mean a location from hell. The person charged with the mega design challenge, German architect Robert Thomas. We just hit the jackpot and I got chosen to be the project leader for, for the team, doing the design in Berlin, moving with the team from Berlin to Cape Town and staying to the end of the project. Only in his 30s, Robert has already designed six famous international stadiums and he and his wife Michelle Ruge move around the world with each of his projects. For me it's a, it's a kind of thrill, especially if you, if you move to another country, another continent and I couldn't imagine just to, to sit in the office, in the same office for all of my life. The whole stadium have to run on backup generators, so on this nice green we will have six diesel generators. Even with Robert's impressive track record, he and his German colleagues knew from the start that building in Africa is an all new experience and that understanding the local environment is critical. It has to be a grey paving block. Above. Enter Gabs Pather, a local architect whose team is selected to work with Robert and his German crew to make this super stadium a reality. They might have the knowledge of the spaceship landing. We know Cape Town. That makes all the difference. We know what will fly here and what won't fly here. For Gabs and his colleagues, this project is a rare opportunity to participate in the building of one of the world's most outstanding stadiums. I've never ever done a, a stadium in my life before. You only get an opportunity like this every 300 years, I don't know. <laughs> Gabs's team will guide the European partners through the intricacies of working in Africa. We do things very differently here. We, in South Africa, we sort of, I think we understand our our shortcomings when it comes to construction. We understand what our contractors can and cannot do. Sticking to schedule and training an unskilled workforce to use all new technology will be a major challenge. Gabs knows from experience that this could lead to some deadly learning curves. I've had a guy fall off a truck and I, I've had a guy suffocate because he was making a fire in a container uh, and fell asleep and died. Uh, you've got to keep your eyes open all the time. If you start with considering all the difficulties, I think you will never start such a project. Just getting started on this stadium means building on one of Cape Town's oldest golf courses. Not everybody is happy about the new development. Quite frankly, this is a complete misappropriation of the funds, speeding fat eaters. Because nobody wants the stadium. Definitely not any of the residents in the vicinity. You should be investing not in the egos of uh, uh, people who live a thousand miles away from here. We should be investing in uh, infrastructure, roads, housing, electricity. We try to make the best out of this situation and plan a stadium that really suits uh, this area and that uh, 
can handle all the, the problems that occur in the, in the uh, environment. Robert's final design, a sensational stadium of epic proportions. It's a massive stadium. <laughs> Cape Town Stadium is designed to withstand gale force winds and deadly storms. Its most daring feature, a hanging glass roof covering the same area as almost 80 professional basketball courts. The stadium will be powered by a brand new power plant and will need seismic protectors to shield it from the movements of the earth. It will look like no other sports arena on the planet. Cape Town Stadium in Greenpoint will change the face of the mother city forever. I couldn't ask to be working on a bit of project to, 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 to cut my teeth up. But Cape Town is not the only super stadium. 1,600 kilometres away in the city of Durban, construction is already underway on a spectacular sporting arena called Moses Mabida Stadium. The foundations are laid. The international team of architects is discussing the designs that take Durban's unusual environment into account. Being on the coastline and experiencing extreme humidity, Durban is infamous for having one of the Earth's most corrosive atmospheres. A major obstacle for this team, who have their sights set on a world record. The plan, for Moses Mabida Stadium to boast the world's longest arch designed to hold up the rest of the roof. The arch will stand higher than the Statue of Liberty and will be the first in the world to carry visitors to the top of the stadium in a cable car. But mega arches also mean mega headaches. Just a few years ago in the United Kingdom, problems with the Great Arch of Wembley Stadium caused construction delays that saw the project overrun by millions of pounds, and it was finished 10 months later than it should have been. There's no room for delays in Durban. To limit the risk, German roof construction gurus are brought on board. Their job? To oversee the assembly of the Moses Mabida Arch and the complex structure of cables that will hang from it. The cable structure of the Durban Stadium is absolutely unique. Every connection has to be designed specially. Therefore, it was absolutely necessary to design it in a 3D drawing program. Thomas Prung and Thomas Hermaking, the project manager, have been working on the arch and cable design for six months. They will relocate from Germany to South Africa to ensure that the arch and cable network go up on time. The giant steel arch is made up of 56 mega pieces that are manufactured here in Germany. These colossal segments will hopefully fit together perfectly to create the arch. If any one piece is a millimetre out, the pieces won't match up and the arch will be in trouble. To fight the rust problem, each metal arch piece is galvanised and painted. This should keep Durban's corrosive atmosphere at bay. There are no shortcuts here. Rust is the enemy and can weaken the entire structure. And the arch needs to be solid and Superman strong. It has to hold up a network of cables weighing around 700 tonnes. The cables are being crafted in the UK and cut to size in Germany. They are made from bundles of high strength steel wire and can take the weight of two jumbo jets. They will be stretched to their limits in order to hold the complete roof structure in place. Tension testing of the cables is a serious business. Today, Thomas, the project engineer, is overseeing the tests. Each 90 mm cable must be able to hold the weight of over 250 SUVs. 40 cables can be deadly. If one cable snaps on sight, it will recoil at lightning speed, destroying property and people in its wake. Thomas and the team get to work analysing any faulty elements. They must get a move on. They have 16 kilometres of cables to test. Two stadiums, one to go. It is here in Johannesburg that the opening and final match of the World Cup will be played. The city briefed architect Bob van Beber to design the largest and most uniquely African stadium of them all. Soccer City. I've never worked on anything like this before. We have to build a stadium comparable to Wembley in London in half the time and at half the budget. Nearly impossible completion date. 
but Bob has taken on the challenge and is committed to getting this colossus in shape. People don't think that we're going to make this, but we will. Somehow we will deliver this project. The, um, Bob and his team need to be ready for obstacles. Firstly, they can't build from scratch and must build on and around the existing stadium due to its historical significance to the city. Plus, there's no time to have all the paperwork in place before building starts. The contractors will have to begin immediately and Bob must design as they build. We're on the back foot. We are going to have to put in some serious time and, and energy into getting the documentation ready for a building which is not something that you should really be designing as you build. Although he will adjust the design along the way, Bob's overall concept for Soccer City is a giant African calabash, or pot, which symbolises South Africa's many cultures. Creating this African icon will take nine million bricks and will require enough electrical cables to cover the distance from Johannesburg to Cairo. The outside of the calabash will be made up of mosaic-like panels. At this plant in Kolbermore, Germany, each one is individually made from glass fibre reinforced concrete. 32,400 of these panels will soon be shipped to South Africa to become part of Soccer City. While the manufacture of the panels is on track, in Johannesburg, Bob and his team encounter a setback. They have done some wind tunnel tests on the stadium model and realised that the shape of the structure is not as welcoming as it looks. So this thing is really potentially uplift, could actually take off. Yes. As the wind comes from one side, it's almost like an aeroplane wing. And what happens is that the wind goes over it and there's actually uplift of the stadium roof. Not only do we have to anchor this stadium in the ground, we obviously need to make sure that it doesn't want to take off like a flying saucer. We will find the solutions. It's back to the drawing board. Okay. In Cape Town, Robert and his team have demolished most of the golf course and are moving forward with the stadium foundations. The, the uh, pitch will be in the area where all these seagulls are sitting at the moment. Various site excavations reveal the rock to be harder than they thought. It's not possible to dig the stadium entirely into the ground because the rock is too hard. This means that the Cape Town Stadium must be elevated. The foundation design will need some reworking. There is some good news. Less excavation means that the construction crews need to dig less and that puts them three weeks ahead of schedule, but they're not ahead of the game for long. So Robert, yes, I'm standing here on Signal Hill. We can't, uh, I think you guys are underestimating the wind conditions in Cape Town. Results of a wind tunnel test conducted on a model of the stadium have revealed some concerning facts. The Greenpoint Stadium site is very much vulnerable to the, the summer winds, south and southeast of winds, which is quite harsh, and wind-driven winds in the winter. The architects must modify the design of the 36,000 square metre glass roof. More time, more money. I think we're really going to have a problem with that one. Uh, that, that gorge is really going to give us some problems with uh, wind conditions, yeah.